Welcome back. You are still watching Her Moments, and I am your host, Asha Kultum. The hashtag is hashtag Her Moments. Yes, every Sunday, 5 to 6 p.m. Our social media handles is at Prico TV Uganda on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can always catch us there. We always have a repeat, or you can put in any suggestions, any questions. Our WhatsApp number is just there. You can give any suggestions of any guests like you did today with Natalie Bitter Toure. Yes, most of you have. You know, some of you could have just joined in, but who is Natalie? Natalie is a business entrepreneur. She's an innovator. If she's to sit you down and tell you about business, trust me, you would go home with what your 1,000 shillings and start up a small business. <laughs> well, Natalie, um, before we went for a break, you're, telling, you're taking us swiftly back to your childhood life. And here comes the question. When was that first time you saved your money and you're like, uh -uh, I'm saving this money for this? Wow, I must have been very young. For something for myself or for a business? Uh, of course, for yourself to do something. You know, we already used to you, you know, sneaking out, you know, sandwiches and you're selling them. <laughs> so I, I guess yeah. you must have had the time when be like, now this money is gonna be much, so I can, you know, tell about the driver to drop us to the supermarket and buy. Okay, now this is a box of biscuits <laughs> for this. I think I was like fourteen. Because my mom is very strict and she didn't want me to wear makeup and other people had makeup. So that's the only thing I would ever have to fight to buy for myself. <laughs> so you have to keep investing in the business and keeping the money until you can afford to get something. And then of course access is a problem. So you have to get one of your friends, give them the money, you buy from me this thing and sneak and hide it. So about 13 or 14 is when I had that kind of interest. The rest of the businesses was more about the freedom. Because my mother was so worried about us having this entrepreneurial spirit, she would try and control us with the money very carefully so that we don't have too much money and start showing off at school and we don't start to sell her things in the house and become a problem for her. So she used to give us, she used to go to the bank when I was a kid and get 1,000 notes to give us for school break because if you try and give a child 5,000 and say let it last the whole week, of course they're going to use it and come on Tuesday and say it's finished, what do you want me to do? So she used to give us 1,000 each every day. And so it was up to us to see what we can do with the 1,000. It was like a challenge every day. How much can you make the 1,000 turn into 3,000 or turn into this much? Then you can go to the tuck shop and buy juice for all your friends. <laughs> and those are exciting things when you're a kid. Well, growing up in an entrepreneurial family, there could be those hard moments that you sit down and be like, oh, when I was a kid, I used to hate this in the house. What could that be? Um, basically, with our family, every time you're sitting at a table, it's a business meeting. Even if you're on holiday, even if it's someone's birthday, even if it's dinner, it's something we just got used to. Because the way my dad is, he sees opportunities everywhere. He will get a napkin in a restaurant and start calculating how many people are in the restaurant and how much the food costs and how much money the restaurant is making in a month. In five minutes, just because he's bored in the restaurant. That's just how his mind works. So we all got used to doing that. So on Sundays, you'll go for lunch and he's talking about work. Then you want to go play or you want to do something else. No, 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 we have to go and see this land. So you sit in the car for like two hours because daddy wants to look at land. <laughs> then we have to stop at this one site because you want to see how the site is going. And then he starts touching everything and carrying everything and telling you how many square meters do you think this place is. You try and guess. Or what kind of material is this? Or he's always asking you questions and taking you to work with him and taking you to sites or making you sit in boring meetings. And then he quizzes you in the car. Huh? Now when he said this, what did he mean? When he asked said this month, what was it? And so you always just had to be ready and on your toes. And we all grew up like that. So I see now it's so helpful for me at work, but I think I also do it like to my <laughs> the people I work with. I'm always doing the same kind of trainings without realizing. And it was very frustrating and boring as a child, but you start to develop an interest. So now when I go to other people's houses or to other hotels, I'm always like, oh, what kind of tiles are those? Or, oh my goodness, where did you get this grass? It's weird things like that that you pick up, but they help you with work. Sure. Uh, at any one time, did you ever sit down besides being a teacher and say, uh uh, daddy, uh, no money, mm -mm. at least I would be this. I don't want to be this. I mean, this is going to be hectic. This is so hard for me. I also want to live a simple life like my friend at school whose mother is this. Have you ever, could, did you ever sit down and think and be like, I think I would be better off if I was this? Yeah. Um, when I finished my master's, I wanted to go and work for companies that had the same mission as me. And my dad didn't understand this whole social business thing. He's like, all oh, my businesses are social businesses. We are in Uganda, you're employing people, that's social. And so when I was going for my master's, 
I told my parents, I'm leaving, I'm not coming back. I gave away all my clothes, I gave away my shoes, my car, everything. My cousins, my siblings have, I'm not coming back to Uganda, I'm going to go get a job. And then while I was at school, I started Musana. So now, as soon as I graduated, I had to move back because now the company was growing and we had to make it work. Yeah. And it worked out well because it's a social business, so I got to live what I wanted. But that was the point where I had worked here and I was really frustrated and I thought, this is not what I want to do. Let me go and work for like a big NGO or go work for like a startup in the States or one of these social businesses in like West Africa and I'll learn so much. And then in a few years, I'll move back to Uganda. But I always wanted to work in business. Business and education have always been the only two things that I thought as options for myself. Many people have known you for businesses. And uh, someone watching would want to know what is this one thing uh, you bought for yourself when you're still a child or a girl and you're so proud of it and you're like, okay, now this is what I want to buy. I've been saving for this and I have bought this. I'm not into materialistic things. Mm -hmm. So I'd never say I'd buy something for myself that was like a prized position or like a phone or a bag. I like experiences. So I like to like save and go on a holiday or plan a party for someone or buy a gift or do something. Let's all go and do this for the weekend. Good friend. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do social things. So I, in my earlier years, all my money went to parties. That's what we would spend our money on every weekend. It's like we need to get a DJ and we need to get decorators and we need to invite this many people and get drinks and get food. And that's where all my money would go every week. Because I like the experience and the fun of the event. Not so much like something material I can keep. Well, living a, a business oriented life as Natalie, we, 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 someone watching would want to know how does Natalie have that self belief in her despite the parents' push? Because, yes, the, I will, people know dictator and be like, he's a strict man, he's a businessman, so trust me, he would tell his kid, you must go for this. Um, if it wasn't for your father, if it wasn't for your mother, what what was that spirit that was pushing you and telling you, Natalie, this is what you're meant for? Or was it just because you went to schools that were teaching you this? Or what is that feeling you had and it would make you be, believe that Natalie can do this? I think I've always been very connected to people. So that's what drives me every day. It's when I speak to someone, hear them, understand their story, their why, their background, how they got to where they are, whether it's someone I work with, whether it's someone I'm meeting for the first time, whether it's someone I'm reading about or watching a documentary about, I really like the people's story and the connection behind it. So even when things are tough, or like when we were starting Musana and we weren't sure, I would think of the street vendors that I interviewed, yeah. or like the ladies who worked in the market and I can remember their faces and remember their story and remember how they explain things to me and that's what touches me and that's what drives me because you can see the potential in people you can see the the passion in people the pain in people what makes a person whole and everything it's not the one side that you see on social media or it's not the, only the hardships that people complain about it's the whole package and for me that's what keeps every day interesting because every day I get to meet new people, I get to meet interesting people, I get to hear about all kinds of things, I read about them, I watch them, and that drives me every day because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. It's always going to be more exciting and someone is going to invent something new and someone is going to do something you never thought about or explain something to you in a whole new way. And I like that surprise of life. Ideally, how is your day like? Like you wake up in the morning and oh, you look at your memories and you're like, okay. <laughs> No, um, I have to be very, very organized because of the amount of work that I have to get through in a day. So I plan my week in advance and my calendar is locked in advance. So then every night I have to make sure I clear all the emails and the WhatsApps from the day before, make sure I go through all the prep that I have to do the next day. So in the morning I have to read through all the different reports or emails or different things I have to do for that day and then get through all the different activities, meetings, events, the things that I have to do during the day. And it's very important to me to stay organized. I run quite late as a person, but I try to keep to a schedule. Otherwise, you just won't get through all the things that you need to get through. And you have to like be proactive about how you balance your day. So over the last few years of working, I've learned my times when I am good at this, times when I'm good at that, like when my energy is in the day, what I'm fast at, what takes me a lot of time, which things I have to do, which things can be delegated, which things I can move, which things, how to organize everything. 
and that's really been, made a big difference in my productivity. Well, um, in Uganda, females have always had a problem of dominating the business industry, and you are one among those few women who have dominated, who have scooped awards, who have been all over recognized for being the young entrepreneur, being the successful business woman. Uh, um, someone will look at how women can dominate in this industry, in the business industry, to get on top of the game. We have had a we've had a really long road. So I'm really grateful for all the women before us who are told they can't and they fought and pushed because they made it easier for women of my generation. Mm -hmm. However, I'm also very grateful that we are at a changing point in time. Historically, women have had to behave like men to get ahead in a man's world, oh, yeah. which is really frustrating and is really hard. And I also started out that way, trying to dress like men, act like men, behave like them. That's the only way you get in and you're always surrounded by men in the work that I do. But I'm really encouraged to see how the world is changing. People are finally beginning to appreciate women who behave like women and embrace the qualities of women and how we can still lead and be examples in business or in fields that are regularly dominated by men. Times are changing and I think it's because for the first time there are so many women in the workforce and every year and every moment we are increasing in the workforce. We are starting to graduate at a higher rate than men. We are starting to be in more industries and it's not just 1%, 5%, 6% women, it's certainly 10%, 20%, 50%. So we're going to get there and we have to keep pushing. And the more of us that are there and acting like ourselves, the more people will see the advantage of having women and see how women can be women and be themselves and still be great leaders. And it's an interesting time because I think we also have to be part of the push because there's still a long way to go. And I hope that we can also open the doors and break the barriers for the girls behind us. Well, uh, she said it all. She said it. Uh, we've already talked about this. We we have to be part of the push, and we have to accept the fact that change is a fact of life. Allow me to take a short, quick commercial break. We'll be right back. This is her moment. This is an important part of being a responsible adult. No matter how much or how little you earn, you need to know how you spend. That is vital. So personally. I know how much money is coming in every month for me. The first thing I do is take off some for savings and I put it somewhere that I can't just get it easily. Next, I know my fixed expenses, yaka, water, groceries, things like that, that you know you need this much per month. And I know by this day of the month, I have to pay them. So those are obligations. It's not something I can decide against. It's not something I can spend money and not pay. So you have to set aside that amount of money. Then I get to see with the rest of this money, what do I need to pay for this month? What do I want to pay for this month? If I have a trip coming, I know I have to budget for that. If I need to buy something in particular, I have to budget for that so that I'm always aware of what my current status is.